Welcome to my next installment in my video lecture series for economics. And in this particular video lecture, we're we'll taking a look at government actions that reduce monopoly. In particular, taking a look at regulation, the issues that come up when you're trying to regulate a monopoly, and giving you examples of optimal versus non-optimal price regulation. So the main vehicle that is often used to, try to attempt to regulate a monopoly is a direct regulation via a price cap, i.e. a price ceiling saying that this is the maximum price that the monopolist is allowed to charge. So let's take a look at this. Here we have uh, our standard downward sloping demand curve, uh, our marginal revenue curve, and we have our output level QC, which is the perfectly competitive output level, and PC, P sub C is the perfectly uh, competitive price, that the price that would exist in perfect competition. Alternately, we also have illustrated here the output level for a monopolist. So a monopolist would set output where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. That's their output level. And at that output level, we follow that up to the demand curve and across, and that gives us the price for a monopolist. So as I think I illustrated previously, some of the issues of dead weight loss with respect to the output level of a monopolist. So the monopolist would charge P M and have an output level of Q M. If and this was a big if, mind you, that the regulators had enough information to determine demand and therefore marginal revenue, and they had the information available about the marginal cost for the monopolist, uh, they could set a price cap or a price ceiling that would be equivalent to the perfectly competitive output level. I'm sorry, the perfectly competitive price. So realize that, that this is what I mean by optimal, and the assumption that we're operating on is that the regulator has the information to allow them to determine what the perfectly competitive output level is and the perfectly competitive price. So the price cap will be at this level here at PC. So this dotted line will represent a portion of the new demand curve. So let me draw that in. So that's the regulated demand. Make sure you realize that, that the price cap is the new regu is a portion of the demand curve. So at the price cap, you just go horizontally as if you were in perfect competition until you hit the demand curve. And then the remainder of the demand curve, uh, the original demand curve, is the regulated demand. So the regulated demand is horizontal at the perfectly competitive price until we hit the original demand, and then the original demand curve is the uh, remaining portion of the regulated demand. Realize that by altering the shape of the demand curve, you're also going to be altering the shape of marginal revenue. So if this is the demand curve here, the regulated part, this is horizontal just like a perfect competition, so this will be marginal revenue until we hit this part of the demand curve, and then we have a demand curve that's downward sloping, so we're going to have an associated marginal revenue curve with this downward sloping demand curve. So in doing this, that we have a marginal revenue curve that is horizontal until we hit the demand curve, we have this vertical section in here until we hit the original marginal revenue curve, and this is the marginal revenue curve under uh, the regulated market. So make sure you understand a couple of things with respect to this. The assumption that we're making is that this is going to be the optimal amount, i.e. this is going to be the price that causes output to be at a perfectly competitive level in this monopoly market. The assumption that we're making is that the regulator has the information available in order to make a determination of what demand, marginal revenue is marginal cost, and can select a price based upon that. The second part is that putting this price ceiling in place, what does it do to the marginal revenue curve? Make sure you realize that it distorts the marginal revenue curve, that the new marginal revenue curve is horizontal at the regulated price until we hit the original demand curve. And then we have a marginal revenue curve that was associated with that original portion of 
the demand curve. So we end up with a shape that's horizontal, vertical, and then downward sloping. And this portion here is the original marginal revenue curve that's associated with the demand curve after we've taken in consideration where the price cap or price ceiling uh, intersects the original demand curve. All right, so problems with this is that, again, as I said previously, we assume that the regular had the information to make good estimates about demand, marginal revenue, and costs. So that might not be the case. It might not be the case that this information is going to be readily available. Alternately, realize that the regulator is going to rely on the the industry is being regulated for this information. So that information might not be accurate accidentally or on purpose. And also that something called regulatory capture can occur. What I mean by regulatory capture is that the regulate, regulatory authority is put in place to regulate the monopoly, but that position, in that position, they get co-opted by the firm that should be regulated or the industry that should be regulated. So instead of acting as a regulator, in the interests of, for example, maximizing social welfare, the, re the regulator themselves act as a, an arm of the regulated industry. So let me give you an example of a non-optimal regulation. So here is the monopoly output level. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the perfectly competitive output level. So this would be uh, the demand curve and marginal revenue curve if there were the optimal amount. So let's say they set the uh, regulated price below what the optimal amount is. So their goal originally was to increase efficiency by setting price as it would exist in a perfectly competitive marketplace and have an output level that is consistent with a perfectly competitive marketplace. Here, the regulated price is below that optimal price. So maybe they had inf uh, erroneous information about what demand and cost were. Maybe this is a deliberate uh, regulation by setting the price below that the regulators believe that consumers will be better off with a regulated price below the perfectly competitive price. However, realize that this firm is still going to operate as if they are profit maximizers. So again, the regulated marginal revenue curve is going to be horizontal at the regulated price until we hit the original demand curve. There's going to be this dashed vertical section, and then the remaining portion of marginal revenue is going to correspond to the portion of the demand curve to uh, that corresponds to the part of demand that occurs after the regulated price is, ta is touching the original demand curve. So we have the marginal revenue curve is horizontal at the regulated price until we hit uh, the demand curve. And then this portion of the demand curve corresponds to this remaining portion of the demand curve. So what is this uh, regulated monopoly going to do? It's going to set price where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. All right, so here marginal cost is where marginal cost and marginal revenue are equal to one another. This gives us the regulated output level and the regulated price was already given. And so we can see that the output level is lower than it would be in a perfectly competitive marketplace. So even though their intention was to make consumers better off by lowering the regulated price below the optimal amount, they are actually causing dead weight loss, this triangle here and this triangle here, due to the fact that there's underproduction relative to what the perfectly competitive output level would have been in this marketplace.